What's up guys, in today's video I'm going to talk to you about how I transformed my career from at one point being unhappy, folding clothes for a living and questioning what it was that I was going to be doing for the rest of my life, to the point where I am today where I get to pretty much do whatever I want to do, travel the world, make money and get to train really cool people like Lewis Hamilton. I've pretty much written down every single key point in my career on this whiteboard from 2011 all the way up to the present day, near the end of 2018. Tried to keep the video short and sweet, but that just was not happening. So you're just gonna have to sit down, get some food, get a drink, and let me tell you my story. We're gonna start around 2011 because that is when I graduated from university, Newcastle University, studied economics and business management, and did not have a clue what I was gonna be doing with my life. So I decided, hey, instead of moping around back home for the summer, I'm just gonna go abroad and you know make some money, have some fun. So I went to Port Banus and I worked in the club promotion industry which was a lot of fun. It was definitely kind of good to get out of my system, I suppose. And when that season was over, I had a call from one of my friends saying, hey, do you want to come back to Newcastle? We've got a spare room going. You're welcome to join us if you want. And I was like, do you know what? I want to move back to Newcastle because that's where all my friends were. I'm initially from Leeds. That's where I was born and bred, but I didn't want to go back to Leeds because there was nothing really going on there. So I went back to Newcastle, but I had no job and I didn't really know what I was going to do. So I decided to continue with the club promotion uh, career and it was me, Scotty T from Geordie Shaw before Geordie Shaw, and Jermaine, who were basically just getting as many people into the club as possible. After a while, I realised, okay, this really isn't for me. I don't want to be working in the nightlife industry because my sleep was all over the place. The temptation to drink was very high, and you're just constantly dealing with drunk people. So what I really wanted was just a, a proper job where I had a set paycheck, guaranteed money and more realistic working hours because I was sick of working until like three or four in the morning. And it just so happens I was doing guest lists on the door one night and I got talking to my friend's girlfriend and I was talking to her about how I didn't really want to work here anymore and she said, well, I'm a manager, I'm a general manager at the Hollister store, Hollister's a sister company of Abercrombie & Fitch. And she says, well, we're looking for new managers so all you need is a degree. If you've got a degree, then you can come down for the interviews and you know maybe you'll get the job. So I was like, oh, why not? I'll give it a try. I just wanted something more reliable. So I did that, went down to the three interviews. I must have done well because I passed them all and I had the job secured for January. So main take home point for this stage of my life was just to get out there, get paid, get some experience. Same goes for any of you guys out there, whether you've just graduated or you're in your late teens, early 20s and you're unemployed, just go get a job. Okay, it's better than just sitting around and not doing anything and not getting paid. So I started at Hollister Beginning of 2012, I had a reliable job. Now the problem was, when I was at Hollister, it got very repetitive and I became quite unhappy very quickly because it was just very, very repetitive and monotonous and I was stuck in the same store day in, day out. Didn't get on with my superiors, my bosses. Actually, was it became very clear to me that I didn't want a boss. I didn't like having someone tell me what to do. I didn't like the fact that I couldn't choose my own hours. I had to work most weekends. And sometimes I was doing overnight shifts, so I didn't finish until three or four in the morning, which was horrendous. I just felt, I remember I was walking around the shop floor just thinking, what the hell? Is this the rest of my life? Like, what else can I be doing? I was trying to wrap my brains on what else I could do for a living. And I was I remember just sat at home, like thinking, mm, maybe, I know, you know, I want to set my own business, but what the hell is it going to be? And I thought at one point of trying to open up my own shoe store or an online shoe retailer because I like shoes. So main take home point for this stage in my career was, okay, you have figured out what it is that you like to do and what it is that you don't like to do. And I'd ask you guys the same question. If time and money was not an issue, there was an abundance of it, what is it that you'd be doing? And for me, it was working out, being in the gym, training. Okay, so it was there, it's like a light bulb went off. I realized, okay, to move forward and to get enjoyment from what it is that I do for a living, I need to do something which is gonna revolve around health fitness and training. The thing which was a game changer for me was one of the guys that I was living with, he wanted to get into you know the fitness industry. So what he did was he'd done his personal training certification, passed it, and he was now training people at a gym, uh, one of the local gyms which we were going to. And I was watching him, I was like, this guy gets to spend all the time in the gym, he gets to train people, he can train whenever he wants, and he can set his own hours. I wanna do that. So I was like, right, okay, what do I need to do? And what I need to do is get my level two and three uh, certification in order to be able to train people. Because um, you shouldn't be training people if you don't have that certification. Now this is one of the most stressful periods of my life because I was doing this personal training certification course, which was three full days per week, sometimes four, and at the same time I was working at Hollister because I needed to pay the bills. 
So for a, it was a good couple of weeks, I did not get one single day off. It was absolutely horrendous. And I remember I had to do one overnight shift to like two, three in the morning. And then I had to go to the course at eight in the morning and do a full day of that. So I need to make this one clear, my friends. When you are making that leap from transitioning from the job you don't enjoy or the job you despise and moving to the job you actually enjoy doing, your passion, it is going to take a great deal of sacrifice and risk. That's a lot of the time just the way it is going to be. So you have to be prepared for it. After that, I was now a certified personal trainer. So I then started personal training people. But very quickly, it got to the point where I realized, okay, it's getting a bit annoying working out in another gym because I was back and forth all the time from this gym. I was like, I need my own place. You know, I want to have my own gym. I thought, God damn, having your own gym, that would be, that'd be a dream. So I teamed up with this, my housemate, my friend, and we set up our own company. And we put a bit of money in and we, again, it was a, hell of a pain in the ass trying to get this sorted but we got our own gym we found a premises we kitted it out and we opened the doors i think it was around february 2014 so that was a that was a big game changer you know we we had our own gym which kind of set us apart from everyone else and then i guess my sort of profession changed from just being a personal trainer to being a gym owner slash personal trainer so as you can see i spent a large chunk of my career during that phase of my life where I was running that gym and you know being a personal trainer myself uh, but again eventually I think this was maybe after a year and a bit you know there were some problems that arose uh, there was a lot of tension between me and my business partner you know we, we just didn't get on anymore so it was kind of it got to the point where it was really awkward just going to work and you know it, it was weird because we, was, we were close friends before it got to the point where we didn't we couldn't even look at each other we couldn't stand being in each other's presence so I started to not enjoy being at work. I needed, I needed to change my career. So saying goodbye to my desk, where I've spent the past two and a half years grafting my tits off. I don't really know what to say. It's an emotional time. I'm not big on goodbyes either. It is just time for me to spread my wings and move to a bigger, more exciting city. Well, one of the reasons for leaving it's down to this sign. Okay, this was probably one of the biggest risks slash leaps of my career. It's a very long story, I'm not gonna go into it, but basically I ended up walking away from my gym, my company, with nothing, okay? It's not as if I sold off my percentage of the shares or the equipment or whatever and got a, a big payout. I walked away with nothing, all right? So that was, that was just, that was mad. But it needed to be done. It was it was something which needed to be done in order for me to gain my freedom. And I did it. I walked away and I was a free man, which felt amazing. But I felt like, Jesus, what the hell have I just done? The past two years of my life, I've all the money, time and effort, which I put into the gym, the, the brand and so on, it was all gone. So some of the lessons which I learned at this point in my life was that there are going to be points in your career where you feel like you're taking a massive step back or you're a complete failure or you've just made a hell of a load of mistakes and you wasted your time. But that's just the way it is. You can't dwell too much in the past. You just have to be positive and look towards the future. Learn from your mistakes, but move forward, okay? And yes, the road ahead might look daunting, but you just want to see it as a series of obstacles which you're going to overcome because you are going to overcome them because you've told yourself you're going to do it and you're going to have a positive mindset. So I, I walked away and I ended up going, I had to stay at my dad's house in Leeds for a month just to kind of figure out my shit and decide what it was that I was going to do. And I knew I wanted to be in London. I wanted to be in the big smoke in the capital of England because that's where the buzz was. So I wanted to be there. Um... But yeah, I spent that month basically just trying to put my own website together and put a plan together because I, I no longer had any clients. All my clients were in Newcastle. I was going to London with, you know, zero client base. And what I wanted to do was just move everything online. Okay, I thought at least if everything's online, then I can be anywhere in the world and I get a lot more freedom with, you know, what it is that I'm doing. And it was around, okay, we had a little bit of a period where it was one month, that month in October, where I was like, what the hell am I doing? Jesus Christ. But... November 2016, I moved down to London, and that was a new, a new start for me, a new chapter. And the thing was, I was moving into this uh, apartment, which was like was at least three times more expensive than what I was paying in Newcastle. So it was a shock because I wasn't making much money. I was like, oh my god, I have to pay rent now, and this, you know, if I can't pay rent, I'm gonna get kicked out. 
So that was a real motivator for me to, you know, you know, get grinding with what it was that I needed to do in terms of the online business. One thing which has become very apparent to me and which I think is very true for a lot of people out there is that some of the greatest leaps in your career in terms of progress are gonna come from times of desperation, okay? When you're desperate and you're almost in panic mode, that's when you really step your game up, that's when you really hustle as if your life depends on it and that is when you see loads of progress. I almost see comfort and contentness as the enemy, right? When you get too comfortable and everything is easy, that's when you take a back foot and you kind of just cruise through your life and you don't really progress as much. So see those times of desperation as a good thing. You wanna put yourself in an uncomfortable situation because that is when you work harder and push yourself more. So after that, the rest was history really. I just went on a content creating mission and with YouTube, my goal was to have like 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And actually by the end of 2017, I think I'd got over 300,000 subscribers. So YouTube for me that year was a huge success story. And the thing is with, with YouTube, it's, it's a little bit different from all the other platforms. You, you really get your personality out there and you know, people get to know you a lot more than just putting pictures up on Instagram. You end up being quite influential. So you have a lot of brands and other people within the industry looking to work with you or collaborate with you to some extent. And one of the biggest highlights for me was working with Puma and training Lewis Hamilton at an event earlier this year. Lewis Hamilton is obviously, he's world renowned Formula One champion and he's, he's a really cool guy. And I got to do a training session with him. I was taking him through, it was some form of a hit routine because obviously he, he has to stay fit for what he does, but he has to remain under a certain weight because he, he needs to fit in the car and so on. So that was really cool. Went through a hit session with him and then afterwards I had the opportunity to sit down with him and ask him a good few questions, which I was just curious to know about his eating routine, his training regime, and just how he stays focused and motivated and so on. So if I can get my hands on the, the audio of that, I'll, I'll try and share that with you on, uh, on another video. And there's one final thing which I wanna finish upon, and that is this. Ask yourself, where do you see yourself in a year's time? Or where do you wanna be in a year's time? Because for me, there's nothing which scares me more than being in the exact same situation or scenario in a year's time where I basically haven't progressed whatsoever. And I asked myself this question a number of times over the past few years, okay, when I was working on the shop floor in Hollister, I predicted and I, I saw the future. If I didn't change anything, I was gonna be stuck on that shop floor doing the same thing again and again and again, being miserable. It happened again when I was trapped in that unhappy partnership, like a, you know, a doomed marriage where I wasn't happy once again and I asked myself, you know, if I don't change anything, if I remain within my little comfort bubble, I'm gonna be in the exact same situation in a year's time. And it scared the hell out of me. So I, I did whatever I could. I took the risk, I took a gamble, I made some sacrifices because I didn't wanna be in that situation in a year's time. So there we have it, folks. That is how I've transformed my career. I'm a much happier man now. I'm free to do what I want, when I want, travel to wherever I wanna go. What does the future have in store? Well, I've got a few things in mind. I think early 2019, I'm gonna have something new dropping, a new project which I wanna work upon, but I just wanna continue doing what I'm doing now, have fun with it, and help you guys along your journey as well, whether it be fitness, business, or just smashing life. So thanks for watching, thanks for your support as always. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.